listening to the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by iCore. Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Welcome to another episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Today's guest is Jack Madrid. Welcome, Jack. Uh, greetings uh, from uh, Manila, Bernie. Always good to, to see your face. It's good to see you, Jack. Thanks for, for joining me on this episode. Jack, as the president and CEO of IT and Business Process Association Philippines, also known as IBPAP, you oversee the day-to-day -day operations. The IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines is the primary trade body and advocacy group of the Philippines IT and Business Process Management Sector, which is also known as ITBPM. With almost 400 members and six partner associations, IBPAP plays a pivotal role in sustaining the growth of the ITBPM industry by working with stakeholders in the government and academia. On this episode, Jack, let's discuss the role of IBPAP and how the organization supports the BPO industry and digital transformation among businesses in the Philippines. But first, Jack, let's begin with your backstory. Tell us your backstory. How did, to, how did you get to your current role? Thank you for the uh, kind introduction, uh, Bernie. Uh, to answer your question, uh, it's been a, quite a journey uh, for me that led to the IBPAP opportunity. I started my career after university as, as a banker uh, in both the Philippines and Hong Kong, uh, leading me after that to a uh, role for a Philippine-based conglomerate uh, overseeing the strategic planning and business development of that company. And then um, my career took a very interesting uh, turn when I decided to join media and became the managing director for MTV Philippines uh, in the mid-2000s. And uh, that was significant because it allowed me uh, to believe that I could actually reinvent myself uh, in my career and also on a, on a personal uh, basis. And from, uh, from MTV, I then uh, was introduced, uh, interestingly enough, to uh, a young and vibrant BPO industry uh, in the country. That was in 2006. And when I entered you know, the uh, headquarters of the uh, site, I, I actually saw the future of, of the country and the opportunity for job creation uh, with the hundreds and hundreds of uh, terminals and seats when I entered the, uh, when I entered this, the site. And uh, that made quite a lasting impression on me. Little did I know that I would end up in IBPAP 15 years later because after that, I, uh, I began my digital uh, journey on the uh, marketing front when I set up the operations of Yahoo. Uh, in the Philippines in, in 2009. I spent two years there uh, before entering yet another new chapter uh, on my journey by setting up uh, the first e-commerce marketplace uh, in the country. After a few years of doing that, I decided to um, join uh, my family who was living in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, so I, I lived there uh, for six years before making the big decision of returning to the Philippines for this IDPAP opportunity. So that's, in a nutshell, my, uh, my career journey so far. Well, thank you for sharing that, Jack. It sounds like you, you caught the vision for the BPO industry early on, and uh, I really enjoyed hearing that in your backstory. So let's, let's get into a little more discussion about IBPAP. I, I give a little bit of an introduction, but why don't you elaborate on that? Who is IBPAP? And, how does IBPAP support the BPO industry in the Philippines? IBPAP, as the flagship uh, association for the ITBPM industry, primarily represents uh, the industry, its members, its employers, 
the investors who have decided to offshore their operations in the country. But most importantly of all, we represent the voice of the employee. We have grown to 1.56 million Filipino employees in the country since the beginning of the industry several decades ago. And we represent the biggest industry in our country um, in terms of jobs uh, for Filipinos and also in terms of being a revenue contributor, contributing almost 8% of the country's GDP. So our work and our mission is very important in advancing uh, the continued opportunities to create jobs throughout the country. Uh, and, and what makes it special is that the Philippines is an archipelago. It is not just Metro Manila and Cebu, but we actually have 25 digital cities throughout the countryside that have their own unique uh, characteristics and talent pools with good universities that will provide future talent uh, because one of the objectives of our uh, of IVPAP is to really grow the industry. Uh, and I'll be talking about the industry roadmap, which we just launched a little bit yeah. later. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I want to hear more about that. Well, given the history of the BPO industry in the country, in the Philippines, how would you describe the present state of the BPO industry in the Philippines? We are at a very exciting juncture. Um, while some people may think that we have reached our peak, I think we're actually entering a new chapter. Given the experiences uh, of the pandemic, that uh, that we are still, you know, in the closing, uh, hopefully the closing stages of, because that necessitated the migration of our one million plus employees from on-site operations to work from home in a hybrid uh, environment. And that proved that the nature of our work, given the fact that we have global customers across all the different time zones, across different verticals and industries. But what we proved was that the nature of our work could be done in a location independent environment and that we could perform that work uh, very well uh, without any dip in productivity or, uh, or customer satisfaction. And so I believe the future is very bright as we develop more value-added services to serve our global customers. So, so I see um, a very bright uh, opportunity ahead uh, to continue contributing to our uh, nation's economy. And, and how would you characterize the core strengths of the Philippines and really the advantage of the Philippines uh, as, as an IT BPM investment destination? The primary strength of the IT BPM industry uh, lies in the Filipino talent. Um, with our population of 110 million, we have the demographics and the scale to grow this industry even more. The Filipino workforce uh, is world renowned for our communication skills, our fluency in English, our patience, our empathy, and our ability to adapt uh, and learn new skills to resolve customer uh, issues across the different industry verticals. So talent supply uh, will always be an advantage, but we need to, to continue to build on that strength given the continued high demand for offshoring to, to the Philippines. On top of that, we have also done a great job in building up the digital infrastructure and internet connectivity throughout our archipelago, uh, outside of Metro Manila and Cebu. We are a nation of thousands of islands, each with their unique populations and talent pools. And so internet connectivity over the years has improved and we will continue to work with our partners in telecom to build up that digital infrastructure in the years ahead. That's a great segue to my, my next question, Jack, and that is, what are the primary opportunities for the BPO industry in the coming years, and how do you, as the leader and the spokesperson of the industry, plan to address them? It's a very timely question, Bernie, because IBPAP just launched our Roadmap 2028, 
this is a project that we do every six years, wherein the industry blueprint for the years ahead are all uh, outlined with specific recommendations on how to grow the industry. Um, the most significant uh, part of our roadmap is really the potential to deliver an additional 1.1 million new jobs for Filipinos through the end of 2028. IBPAP will work with all the industry stakeholders, our partners in government and the private sector to make our vision happen and deliver that 1 million plus jobs. The four pillars of the roadmap lie in to continue attracting and retaining investors to the country. And the primary work that lies ahead for this is to continue the progress that we've made on the ease of doing business. The second lever will be talent supply. We will continue to work with the Department of Education and our other partners in government to strengthen university and high school curriculum and content working with the private sector to ensure the continued availability and employability of digital talent for the years ahead. This is probably the most critical pillar given our demographic advantage. Third will be continue to improve and strengthen digital infrastructure, as I mentioned earlier. Given the size and breadth of the country, connectivity will continue to play an important role so that we are able to work, especially in this new location, independent, hybrid future of work that we are already working under. Fourth and equally important, especially if we achieve the first three, will be for me and my team to work on the country's rebranding and industry positioning to continue to address the challenge of talent supply. Because one million new jobs, which took us over two decades, will uh, now need to be achieved in the next six years. So we really need to focus on this lever. And that will mean tapping new talent pools and improving and strengthening the image of our industry as a long-term career for many Filipinos. So these are the four levers that my team and I will be working on, and uh, it's going to be a very challenging but exciting road ahead. Well, Jack, thank you for sharing that. Uh, your, your passion and your commitment for your role as the, the leader of IBPAP is apparent, and I appreciate you sharing your insights and uh, the plans that you envision for IBPAP and for the country and for of course, the benefit of the BPO industry. So, so thank you for that. Uh, I'd like to invite you to share where can people who are watching or listening to this episode connect with you and learn learn more about IBPAP. Uh, the first place, Bernie, will be uh, our website, ibpap.org. Um, I am also very active on LinkedIn. Uh, so, Jack, look for me, Jack Madrid, um, and uh, that's probably the best way to to. Uh, to reach and message me. Okay, terrific. Well, our listener knows that that's available linked up in the show notes uh, right there on your podcast player. And if you're watching this on the video, then you're seeing both the website address and uh, Jack's LinkedIn URL scrolling along the bottom. So Jack, we're not done yet. We have one final question. And that is, it's a tradition here on the Digitally Irresistible podcast. We like to know when you're not working, Jack, what do you like to do for fun? Um, I uh, I love I love the question. Um, uh, my my passion uh, is is in the study of wine. I pursued my wine studies uh, a few years ago, and I spend most of my time uh, teaching people uh, how to be better tasters of wine. I'm a, I'm an informal wine coach, uh, and uh, love to share my knowledge. On, on the different wine regions and wine styles and, and grapes. Um, and, and I also spend a fair amount of time uh, blind tasting, which means I try to analyze uh, the wines that, that, I, uh, that I get to taste 
and the further my knowledge of that. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I, uh, I try to spend uh, a fair bit of time on the weekends uh, playing golf and and improving, you know, improving my my short game specifically as I uh, as I uh, you know work on on my handicap. Terrific. Well, those are two great hobbies, very enjoyable. So uh, congratulations on that. And Jack, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on this episode of the Digitally Invisible Podcast. Really appreciate you sharing your vision for IBPAP and your vision for the BPO industry. Really appreciate it very, very much for joining me today. Thank you very much, uh, Bernie. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by iCore. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.